Deep Energy Balance. This module was developed by Dr. Chierik Bora and Dr. Mura Kachira at the University of Arizona. The content of this module includes the following topics. First, we would like to take a look at differences between air temperature and leaf temperature. Second, we would like to go over the factors affecting leaf temperature with focus on energy input and output at the leaf. Then we will apply the understanding of leaf energy balance to the plant canopy. We all know that temperature is a very important factor affecting plant growth. This is because all plant physiological processes are affected by temperature. But leaf temperature has the direct effects on these physiological processes happening in the leaf, not the air temperature. Leaf temperature is, however, largely affected by air temperature and other factors affecting leaf energy balance. Therefore, leaf temperature is often substantially different from the air temperature of surrounding air. So this chart is an example of the fact that leaf temperature can be very different from air temperature. The x-axis is the time observation in hours. So this is a 24-hour time period of the observation of the temperature. Y-axis is the leaf air temperature difference. Um, when the leaf temperature is higher than air temperature, the value is positive. So for example, value 6 means that leaf temperature is 6 degrees Celsius greater than air temperature. The measurement of this graph was made for the young vegetable seedlings grown under constant environment conditions of the uh, temperature and radiation inside a growth chamber. During the time between 12 hours and 16 hours, leaf temperature uh, becomes as great as 5 degrees uh, higher than air temperature, presumably because of the drought uh, happening uh, during this time period. S therefore, the irrigation helped to set back the leaf air temperature difference close to zero or original level, um, uh, as you can see in this chart. Note that this was observed under constant environment conditions. And so when plants are grown under greenhouse conditions, change in air temperature or solar radiation could more drastically change the leaf temperature. So what are the factors determining leaf temperature? To answer the question, we need to understand the factors affecting energy balance of leaf. Factors affecting energy balance and therefore the leaf temperature are shown in this slide. First, the most influential factor is radiation. Note that there are two different kinds of radiation to consider in leaf temperature. The first is the solar radiation, which is also called shortwave radiation. The other one is the longwave radiation, or sometimes called thermal radiation. The second factor is the parameters related to optical properties of the leaf, such as reflectance, absorptance, and transmittance. As we mentioned earlier, air temperature does have an effect on leaf temperature. And other factors are air current speed, transpiration, condensation over the leaf, and then metabolic process, which is often negligible because of the level of heat generated by this process. So let's look at each of these factors to better understand, starting in the next slide. So this chart is showing the solar radiation, generally starting from somewhere around 280 nanometers to 2800 nanometers. The radiation from 400 to 700, which is the peak of the solar radiation, 
is used for photosynthesis, therefore called photosynthetically active radiation. But the amount of energy once absorbed by chloroplasts basically turned into heat eventually. So that almost all the energy in this region is also heat. Therefore, you can consider that all solar radiation from 280 to 2800 nanometers as thermal source to increase the plant temperature. The long wave radiation is called as black body radiation, thermal radiation, infrared radiation. You might have heard one of those names before. This is the radiation emitted from the surface according to their absolute temperature. All surfaces therefore emit the radiation, long wave radiation, and the amount can be computed using this Stefan Boltzmann equation. And Stefan Boltzmann equation has a parameter of temperature and um, emissivity and Stefan Boltzmann uh, uh, constant shown in here. And uh, um, emissivity is a characteristic value representing the kind of surface and um, it's a relative value compared to the perfect black body radiation and these emissivities are often between 0.94 and 0.99, so very close to black body or perfect black body radiation. So using this equation um, as an example, we can compute the, the long wave radiation from the surface of the leaf having temperature 24 degrees C and emissivity of the leaf uh, uh, 0.95. So the amount of long wave radiation emitted from each square meter is uh, 441 watt. And this value is relatively high because as you know midday solar radiation level during summertime is as great as 1000 watt per square meter. So this is why long wave radiation cannot be ignored because of the, the uh, magnitude of the value. So that this slide is showing the um, incoming and outgoing radiations over leaf. Again, two kinds of radiations shown, uh, solar radiation or short wave radiation and long wave radiation. Incoming shortwave radiation is usually the largest component during the day and small amount like 10% or so is deflected back over the leaf surface. Long wave radiation is emitted by leaf uh, based on the leaf temperature and then also leaf receives long wave radiation from the surrounding objects um, such as neighboring plants or greenhouse structures or the sky. And net radiation is the value considering all the radiations, incoming radiations and going, outgoing radiation, and that's the balance um, contributing to the leaf energy balance. Before showing the leaf energy balance, I would like to explain two different types of heat transfer involved in leaf energy balance. One is the sensible heat. So this is a heat transfer according to the difference in temperature between two objects. Sensible heat is transferred from high temperature side to low temperature side. The other type of heat transfer is latent heat. Latent heat transfer occurs through the phase change of water such as evaporation and condensation. As you can imagine, evaporation or transpiration is a very important component determining energy balance of the leaf because evaporation or transpiration is the cooling process of the leaf. The, the amount of heat removed by transpiration or evaporation is very large. Um, so one kilos of water evaporated and then 
the 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 heat as great as 2.454 megajoule can be removed. Finally, this diagram is showing all the factors in the energy balance of the leaf. Net radiation. This is the balance of short wave radiation, long wave radiation, as you have seen in the, one of the previous slides. The value is positive during the day, adding heat to the leaf. The value could be negative during the night, removing heat from the leaf. Sensible heat transfer between leaf and air. The value is negative when leaf temperature is higher than air temperature. Latent heat transfer between leaf and air. The value is negative when transpiration is going because it's a cooling process, removing heat from the leaf. So the value is negative. So during the day, the net radiation is very large positive component because of the solar radiation. And latent heat transfer is very large negative uh, component because of the transpiration removing heat. And when the transpiration doesn't catch up and also other component doesn't remove the heat uh, to meet the gain by the net radiation, then leaf temperature must increase. And then that is the energy used for increasing temperature uh, uh, being considered as one of the component in the energy balance. Here is the equation of energy balance. The sum of all the positive and negative values must be zero and balanced. And um, there are a few more things you want to learn uh, in terms of energy balance. Um, you might have looked at other module talking about wind and boundary layer. Um, boundary layer created over the surface gives some resistance to the transfer of mass and transfer of the heat. And sensible heat and latent heat are therefore affected by this boundary layer resistance. When resistance is high, then heat transfer is restricted. Therefore, heat may not be removed as smoothly as the situation with lower boundary layer resistance. So what affects boundary layer resistance? One of the factors affecting boundary layer resistance is the wind velocity, air circulation. When wind velocity is high, boundary layer resistance is low. Therefore, enhance the heat transfer by sensible heat and latent heat. Another important factor affecting heat transfer is the stomatal resistance. This is affecting transpiration rate. Therefore, latent heat transfer is affected by stomatal resistance. So that's why uh, in the path of latent heat transfer, I have two resistances shown. One is boundary layer resistance. The other one is stomatal resistance. So now, and now you understand that all the components or factors affecting leaf energy balance. This concept can be expanded to canopy level, as in the leaf energy balance. Factors affecting canopy energy balance are net radiation, sensible heat, latent heat, and canopy temperature change, um, and metabolic heat. One more important factor unique to canopy energy balance is the heat transfer between the soil and the canopy or the, the plants. So now you can understand the canopy temperature uh, using the same way as the leaf temperature energy balance. This slide is showing leaf temperature distributions measured in a canopy. Um, the upper four pictures are showing uh, lettuce canopy. Um, this is the original uh, image of the lettuce canopy, very high density um, lettuce canopy. And then the second uh, picture is um, image taken by thermal camera showing the temperature distribution before applying water stress. So the blue color is showing about 20 to 21 degrees C 
Celsius temperature, so very uniform temperature distribution except some edge, you know, effect. And then after imposing water stress, you can see the increase of temperature by few degrees. Um, uh, the green one is about 25 degrees C. Um, the red one is about 34, 35 degrees C. Um, and then after stress was removed or recovered, temperature back to the same or similar level uh, of 20 to 21 degrees C. Thermal camera is very useful tool to find the temperature distribution, although calibration is sometimes uh, challenging. Therefore, sometimes it's giving a dif reference or relative values uh, rather than very accurate distribution. The lower picture is showing the vertical temperature distribution within plant canopy. This is a tomato uh, canopy. Um, you see the stem. Um, here and then leaves, leaves, leaves here and lower leaves and then you see the lower temperature distribution um, in the lower section of the canopy compared to above section of the canopy and presumably because of the light you know uh, distribution in the canopy high light intensity or high net radiation above the canopy and a lower net radiation below the canopy that is creating as great as few degree difference within the canopy. And understanding this temperature distribution is very important because upper canopy may be the area um, actively photosynthesizing and lower canopy may be the area hanging fruits and that you know the fruit ripening is affected by that temperature. Thank you very much for listening.